God, we thank you that you are here. Thank you that you love to be worshipped. Thank you that you give us the gift of coming into your presence. Thank you uh, that you have chosen, as we're praying this morning, as people have been feeling, you have chosen to work in this church in this season. And we're thankful that you're here. We're thankful that you're moving. And we're here to give ourselves to you afresh today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a seat. <laughs> let's, uh, let's give a little round of applause for the band, right? Don't include me, but uh, big thanks to everybody. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit of a different day. So my name's Scotty. Uh, I have the privilege of helping shepherd this group of people into God's vision for what this church is going to do and what our mission is together as we do all the things that God's calling us to do together. Um, so if you're new, uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Thanks for coming and joining. Just know that the, today's a little bit different. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't heard some people talking about it, today's a special day. So for two years, we've been on this journey of trying to figure out our identity as a church. Um, and today's the day that we celebrate this new identity uh, as we shed the old and walk forward into the new with this new name, Arise Church, which is super exciting. Can we just get a little whoop or something for that one? <laughs> <laughs> So a uh, couple of little announcements and update things. There are some Connect cards in the seat backs uh, close to you or on the table in front of you. If you're new, uh, fill one of those in. Give us some information. We'll get you on the mailing list. We can give you all the information that you need uh, to know. Um, there's also space on the back for prayer requests. So if you fill those in, there's a team of us, 4 p.m. every Tuesday, get together to pray over every prayer request that's there. So fill it in. Um, there's a gray box on the way out at the back. You can just drop it in there as you're leaving, and we'll be praying for those prayer requests. Um, if you're a kid here, Kids Church is starting, so you can make your way to the back. Uh, go have a fun time. Uh, I want to hear some stories of what's going on. Make sure you make enough noise through there that we have to hear you through here. Uh, they're like, they're in the zone. They're in the zone. <laughs> um, there are some name tags nearby. So some of the seat back pockets have them. Some of the tables have them. One of the problems with having a growing church is it's not always easy to know who the people are, and it gets awkward when you meet someone for the 10th time and have to ask them their name again. Uh, so just find a name tag, stick your name on it. It just helps us out a little bit, especially if you've been around here a lot. Um, help out those of us who are embarrassed that we don't remember your name. So just stick a name tag on, that's helpful. A um, couple of announcements. First one is this evening at 7 p.m. There's a thing being launched tonight called 10 Days of Prayer. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're going to be praying for the city for the next 10 days, morning, noon, and night. And so there's a launch night happening tonight. There's churches all over the city participating. And so the launch night is happening downtown. I'm waiting on the slide popping up. Um, if it's there, we lost it. Um, so it, it starts tonight, 7 p.m., um, and there's a, a new app that is being launched called Holy Ground, and the purpose of the Holy Ground app is to help us uh, prayer walk the city and to help cities all over the world prayer walk their city. So it tracks where you walk as you pray. There's guides in there. There's help in that process. So that has been launched tonight, and so if you want more information, I'd actually have you come talk to Renee or come talk to me after the service, but it's going to be downtown at 7 p.m. I'll I'll get you the address. It may also be in the bulletin already. So if you open the bulletin, the address should be in there. Um, we'd love to have loads of people show up and celebrate as we worship together and launch that. Um, the other thing is October 6th to 8th, there's a conference happening in town with 24-7 prayer. So it happens Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday. And there's a group of us from church going uh, to, to be present in what is happening as they're kind of doing a similar thing to us, and nationally, 24-7 is relaunching with a new vision and direction as they move forward. So uh, we value 24-7. They, their ministry has impacted me. Uh, their ministry has had a significant impact on the way we have functioned as a church and on what God is doing here. Um, and so we want to lean into that as much as possible. So the information is in the bulletin. You can register online. Come talk to us if you need help with the financing for that. We'd love to have you there. Uh, I think that's everything. Let me, uh, there are three ways to give. Um, you can give online at our website, wewillarise.org forward slash give. Um, you can uh, 
you can write a check, put it in the offering envelope, and stick it in the back. The trouble trick with that is we're still waiting on the bank account shifting over. So if you're writing a check, write it out to Alliance Bible Church, and we'll let you know when that switches. We were hoping we wouldn't have split personality today. Um, and then you can also jump on the Tithely app and give that way. So let me pray for this, and then we'll launch into the rest of what we've got this morning. So God, thank you uh, for all of the ways that you gift us. Thank you for the, the, the resources that you give us financially, as well as uh, our talents and our time and our relationships. Lord, we pray uh, that out of the abundance that you give us, that we, uh, we give back to you generously what you give. And then we say, Lord, would you take what we give and would you multiply it uh, for the sake of lost souls coming to know you? Would you expand the work of your kingdom that more people would exalt your name through Jesus, we pray. Amen. So welcome. Welcome to Arise Church, everybody. <laughs> um, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to invite a few people up to, to speak. I've got a couple of scriptures that I just want to allude to as we start. And then what we want to do this morning is just take some people through the, the kind of breadth of the people in our church. And they're going to share some stories about the impact that's been happening in their life over the last two years. And hopefully it's going to give you a flavor and a, uh, of what's going on. It's going to build your faith for more of what is to come. But here's, here's where I want to start. I want to start with Ephesians 5, 14. So if you've been tracking with us, we've been looking at different places that the word arise appears in scripture. And so I'm going to talk about one scripture that has the word in it and one that doesn't. Um, and what I want to do is I want to give us, as we launch into this new season of church life, I want to start with one passage in scripture that's a bit of a, a challenging confrontation from the Apostle Paul to us. And then one from Isaiah that is a delightful vision of where things are going to go. So let me read this scripture to you. Uh, and then I need to grab my Bible. So this is what it says in Ephesians 5.14. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So this is a moment where Paul, in the middle of his letter, bursts into what they don't know. They don't know if this is uh, quotes from Old Testament passages or if this is some hymn that had been formulated at this time. And this is a line from the hymn. We don't know. But it's, 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 it's in here, so it's important. Um, but, but here's the deal. This moment, this is why it's, it's said, this is a moment that is the culmination of the argument he's just been making in chapter 5. And so we're in a season where today, we're, it's a mile marker. It's a threshold moment in the church as we shed the old and we walk forward with a new identity. Uh, and so what we want to be aware of is with every threshold moment in life, there are things that we carry in to this moment some of it is good and some of it isn't. So this, as Paul is writing to this church, this moment is describing a threshold for them and an invitation that I think is applicable to us. So this is a little harder, a harder exhortation I want you to think about and examine and reflect on yourself today as we think about the call to arise and to shine in the world. So this is, the rest of it's not up here. I just want this up here. And I'm going to read uh, from verse 1 down to verse 14. So this was Paul's words to the Ephesian church. He says, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of life consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. This is the journey we're on as a church, finding out what pleases him. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it's shameful even to mention what is the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. 
This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Kept this one till now, right? Because we're in this threshold moment as we're taking this name arise and we're calling one another to arise and go forth. Part of today is an invitation to self-examination. As we as a church commit to move forward in a new way, what are the things that are the old self that you want to say, I need to do some work so that we don't carry this in uh, to the future and allow it to negatively impact our own spirituality, our families, our church life, and our witness to the world. It's not all going to disappear today. God may miraculously heal some things today, which would be awesome. But this is the beginning of a journey um, as we wake up from sleepiness to arise. And the promise in that moment is that Christ will shine on you. Second scripture, Isaiah chapter 43. This is a promise uh, that Isaiah gave to God's people. It was given to the people of Israel. We are also God's people. And so this promise has implications for us today through Jesus. And so let's read these words. So that was the negative challenging side. Let's look at the encouraging side. What does God want to say to our church today? He says this, forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. So easy to do. Why should we not dwell on the past? See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Hands up in here if you can perceive that God has been doing a new thing here, right? We can perceive it. It's not imaginary. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Has anyone else looked out at the world around about and felt like we're walking through a wilderness and a wasteland? He's not done. He is making a way in the wilderness and bringing nourishment and water to the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. He has chosen us. He has formed us. He has called us. He has sent us, and he has promised that he's doing a new thing, and that new thing is going to result in us and people out there bringing glory and praise to his name. In our pre-service prayer time, we always gather before the service for about 30 to 40 minutes, and we pray together. And at the end, we stop, and we have a moment where we sit in silence just to listen. Is God trying to say anything today? And then we break into groups, and we discuss what God's put in our heart, and then we feed it back to the room to hear what God may want to say to our church. And one of the things that someone said today, I left all my notes down here. This is, this is what someone said. They said, they're so, like, so full of joy right now, seeing God pour into our church. And the words they used were, it's amazing that God has chosen our church to pour into in this season. This is not like we've done some stuff and it's making the church grow and people are changed and salvations are happening. This is not that we've done stuff. This is God has chosen in this moment to work in our midst and he's chosen to use you to bring that about. So there's lots of people in here that have done lots of hard work over the years to, to move from the old self and into the new, to, to shed the things that you've loved and cherished in the past in order to move into things that, that are reaching the generation after us. That work that you've done uh, is the, the reason that God has chosen to move in our midst and pour out his spirit uh, in our congregations. So, and then they said, all of this, he said it's a drop in the bucket of what the Lord can do, and he's setting us up for what is about to happen. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So I've got a few friends that I want to come and, and share a little bit of their journey uh, over the last couple of years. I want to start with Dan Barron, if you're happy to jump up here. Uh, it's been so fun watching Dan's heart shift and change to see his humility and teachability and hunger. And I'm excited for him to share a little bit of that with us this morning. Scott asked me to talk about what the prayer room that we have had, what the impact was that was on me. And I got to say, you know, the first time we, we did the prayer room, it was for 24 hour, you know, 24 seven prayer. It was in January, I think it was. And uh, 
I signed up for one of the shifts. And I was thinking, an hour? How am I going to fill an hour with prayer? But then I opened the doors to the prayer room, and immediately I felt this peace and quiet, and just the whole atmosphere was filled with God. And I felt like I was being called to discover God in an all new way. Uh, there was all kinds of things in there. There's prayers on the wall, there's Bibles, there's books to read, there's uh, prayer stones in there, there's pages to color. There was a Bible that you could color in. That was pretty cool. And uh, they had a map on the wall with missionaries to pray for and persecuted areas of the, of the world to pray for. There was a wealth of stuff in there to do that you could connect with God. Um, I chose to read scripture my first, and, and Psalm 19 really just jumped out at me because it was talking about God. It was a description of God and his attributes, and it moved me, so I wrote this down word by word, <laughs> and it took a little while, but as I was writing it, I was using these words to praise God, and that's one of the ways that I connected with a God that very first time. Time went fast. Before I knew it, my hour was up. And before the prayer room, I only knew of one or two ways to connect with God, to pray and praise him. But after the prayer room, I know all kinds of ways to connect with God. And uh, I, I think the connection, you know, I felt it there, but I can take it out of there into the world so that I can connect with God anywhere, but that room is a special place. I think there's something deeper, something more spiritual, just the setting of it. Time gets set aside and we get to commune with our God. And uh, I've used the prayer room several times since then. Always, always a pleasure and something new coming out of it. Try it, you'll get something. My, my favorite moment, Dan, we were at pre-service prayer. We'd just done the week of the prayer room. And on Sunday, as it was ending, we were here for pre-service prayer, and we gathered up in our groups, and we're sitting at this table right here where the Millers and the Davises are. We're sitting right there, and I, I just, we get to the end and ask the question, so what's, what's, what's on your heart today? And Dan just looks up, and he goes, the prayer room. And I, I, I don't know if you remember these words, but I go, well, anything specific about the prayer room? And uh, I just remember you tearing up a little bit. And you're just like, I feel like a kid in a candy shop. And he said, I, I don't know if you remember these words. I remember them they ingrained in my mind. But he says, I don't know whether to be so excited that a whole bunch of new ways to engage God have been opened up to me or whether to be grieved that it's taken this long in my life to find them. And I was just like, oh. So, yeah, Dan, thanks for being open. Thanks for being humble. Thanks for sharing. Um, I'm going to invite Jessica up now. Jessica has been a significant part of the church on our leadership team. Uh, the best job she did was help find the new pastor. Uh, <laughs> here you go. All right. So, you know, Scott's been asking for us to think about um, how our life is different over the last couple of years. And um, as he asked the question, it, it got me to thinking, but I, I wasn't planning on sharing this morning. Um, but, uh, but then Scott was asking me to share about um, what goals we had for the church back a couple of years ago when we were on the transition team and how we've seen um, that come to life. And as I thought about it, I realized that the two to go together, my story of transformation over the last couple of years and the story of the transformation in this church are intertwined, which makes sense, right? Because as God works to change us as a church, it's going to grow us as individuals and as the collective individuals grow, we see transformation, more transformation in the church. 
So I'm going to take you back to June of 2019. Um, this is when we, um, as a church, brought in um, an external organization, Vital Church, to do an assessment of, of our church. And as part of that, they, they did a lot of interviews. They interviewed all of the church leadership at the time. They interviewed the uh, congregation members. Um, and then they put out this very detailed report. And the report came back talking about that we as a church were suffering from the death of a vision. And other words that they used throughout the report were things like, disappointment, grief, duty. Um, and it was just about six months later that you could have used those same words to describe me. Um, many of you have heard me talk about this before, but completely out of the blue, we got a letter from our oldest son who grew up in this church um, letting us know that he was now identifying as a trans woman. Um, you want to talk about disappointment and death as of, of a vision? And, and I don't want to be overly dramatic, but I felt like I was like plunged into this dark tunnel. And um, it took me a long time to figure out even what emotions I was feeling. Of course, I was worried about him. I was concerned about him. I was, there was like self-recrimination and disappointment in, for me of like, where did I fail him as a parent that he felt like he needed to make this move? Um, and there was anger. I was angry with him because of what I felt he was doing to his wife, who by the way is totally supportive of him. Um, so that was my part, not hers. Um, but, uh, and finally I admitted I was angry at him because he wasn't fitting into my plans. He wasn't fitting into my control or the way that I thought our family should be. So back to the church for a moment. That vital church report that I talked about, it didn't stop with death of a vision and disappointment. It went on to talk about what we as a church needed was um, the resurrection of a vision and uh, an overall resurrection mindset. And so as that, through that transition time, as we prepared to hire our new pastor, um, we started dreaming again as a church. And some specifics that we were dreaming for were we were dreaming um, of a team approach to leadership where um, we were had a focused uh, focused intentional discernment of God's direction for the church for where he was leading us we dreamed of a flexible and adaptable approach to allow God to work as he saw fit and we dreamed of actively pursuing opportunities to reach out to the community around us outside of the church building. And all of this would be undergirded by an intentional outpouring of prayer. Those were the dreams that we put into the pastoral profile that we used to search for our new senior pastor. And those were the dreams that helped bring Scott here to fill that role. For me, for me personally, more than um, a year after that letter that we received from our son, I too started experiencing a resurrection. I just suddenly one morning felt like I'd exited that tunnel. I didn't, it, it was Easter Sunday of last year, 2021, and I truly felt like I had arisen from the disappointment and grief. I, after more than a year of crying almost every day and where I could pray about nothing but my son, I just didn't feel like crying anymore. <laughs> and I realized that I was trusting God to work in his life. 
and that my job was to love him through it, to keep lifting him up in prayer, and to reflect Christ back to him. And so I was starting to have this resurrection mindset in my own life. In fact, I began to dream. I started, I would love to be able to um, find ways to help other parents or other people impacted by this whole gender identity issue. And, and I don't know what that looks like yet. Um, but I'm open to whatever God wants to build in me and to do with me. But I know he has a lot of foundation building to do first. And I've seen him doing it. As part of the church leadership team, we've been working on improving our practices of discernment and for where God's leading the church. And I've been working on applying those same practices to my own life and my own family decisions. And I have a long way to go. <laughs> but God's slowly gripping, loosening my grip on my control. And um, he's teaching me to love better. He's, um, I'm learning to wait for his timing and to recognize him even in the things that don't match up with my ideas, they don't match up with my plans or dreams. And I'm learning to see myself and others through God's eyes rather than my own. And so when it comes to our church, I believe he's doing the same thing. We're starting to see our dreams come to fruition. But God is still working on the foundation for the rest. We have some of our leadership teams in place, and there's plans for more um, to drive us forward. We're learning to be adaptable as we experiment with different approaches, like a rise in the park this summer. <laughs> um, we've learned some about discernment and listening to God, and we're continuing to practice it and develop it. This renaming today, as Scott's mentioned several times, is the result of a long process of discernment, of to reach that prayerful agreement that this is where God was moving us rather than just pushing our own agenda. Um, and there's an undergirding and culture of prayer that's been put into place, and it's gonna be, continue to be developed over time. We have our eyes open for where God wants us in the community. We're preparing and we are being prepared. We are beginning to arise. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. I mean, yeah, like church life, let's just go, life is messy. Uh, things never go the way we expect. There's things we're hoping and dreaming for that don't go the way we want. We have opinions and perspectives that bash up against other people. And, uh, and then we're on this journey of learning to soften our hearts, to be open, to love well like Christ loves. And it's been amazing to watch you, Jessica, soften and open uh, and, and listen. And uh, Jessica is a phenomenal teacher, and it's been fun to see you. Uh, grow in that and learn more how to direct not just the information impartation but the deep formative experience of the people it's just been beautiful it's been fun having you on the team so thanks um last one i want to have mark wager come up and speak and uh <laughs> i asked mark to come because mark confuses me sometimes because he turned up one week and i wonder why he came back uh, and so he's been around for about eight months, and he's thrown himself into the middle. I think our early conversation over lunch was how you weren't going to get involved for at least a year, <laughs> uh, which resulted in a conversation five weeks later. But why don't you share a little bit about why you stuck around? Good morning. Um, so yes, my name is Mark Wager. Uh, unfortunately, my wife and kids aren't here this weekend, but... Uh, You've probably seen them around, Becca, and then our three little ones. Um, our story is that in 2016, uh, Becca and I and Ollie, our less than one year old, made the decision to move to Portland to help plant a church. Um, so after five years of, of struggle and challenge, the decision was finally made that uh, things hadn't worked out, and so we folded the church plant and we started looking for a new church home. Um, 
we, I of course made a list, right? Like I've got an engineering background. So I did all my research and I made my list of the eight churches and I went all the way down through the list and I got to the last one and it was a super awkward experience and I went home like, all right, well, now, now what are we going to do? There's no, what, what other churches do we see, right? Well, we've got family that lives a few blocks away and we'd driven by this church a number of times and it was like, well, None of my plans worked out, so I guess we'll go check out this church. Um, and, you know, did the typical, like, new, new person to the church thing where, like, I came through the door and I made sure that anybody that looked at me, I, like, got other people between me and them so they couldn't come say hi. You know, snuck into the back row um, and, and worship starts. And it wasn't the lights or the music or anything like that. It was looking around the room and realizing, like, the hunger and the genuineness of, of the worship that was happening in the people in the room. And I thought, boy, after the last five years, this is different. Um, and it's, it kind of moved me in a way that, you know, I hadn't felt in a while. So that was, I think, what started the process. Um, you know, heading out the doors afterwards, multiple people came up and introduced themselves, and it was, it was great. Um, had no problems. I went out to the car, and I called my wife, and I said, you know, I don't know. If, I don't know if any of you are married to someone like this, but like I call her, she doesn't answer, of course. So it's like, okay, well, I'll just leave her a message. And I said, hey, honey, I, I went and checked out of this church, and I think you're gonna like it. I think we should come back. So we came back, and and the message that Scotty gave that week kind of stuck with her because we were coming from a, a little different faith background. And so when he said, here's a couple different opinions, you know. And this is the one we're going to talk about today. We thought, oh, okay, so maybe there is room here for us, right? Maybe, maybe this is a, a place where we can have a little bit different opinions and still all worship together. Um, so we got done, and we're, we're walking out, and we get out to the car, and I'm like, you know, honey, like I feel like God is moving. I feel like there's change happening here. And for a couple of people whose life was full of change at the time, it actually felt like we fit in. Um, and so I guess I would just close by saying, like, this renaming thing, um, it's a big deal. But also there's so much history here. There's so much uh, foundation here that I just, I just pray as we move forward that we can continue on this journey that God's taking us on. Um, and also just thank you all for letting us be part of this church family. I love that guy. Um, no, it was funny because he, he came and I was like, man, these guys, they planted a church. That means they're like serious. We've done that. We know what it's like. And then we go for lunch and he's like, yeah, it's been really painful. It's going to be at least a year before. We just want to sit back for like a year and uh, before we jump in. And then it was, it was, <laughs> it was five weeks later. And uh, he, Becca's walking out the front door and she's like, okay, so we need to talk to you about where we're serving. And I was like, five weeks. <laughs> yes. So uh, we're paying for more and more of that. Um, you know, every person in the room has a story. Like everyone is transforming in some way. God is moving in all of us. I get the privilege as, as the, the leader here. I get the privilege of hearing all the stories because they make their way to me. And I wish we could spend all day just sitting listening and pass the mic around and have everyone share the story, whether you're part of our church or not, of what God has been doing in our midst. God is moving and he's stirring and he's changing and he's shifting and it's such a beautiful thing. Our hearts are opening. Uh, our perspectives are adjusting. We're, our edges are softening. Uh, I, I love watching. We did a rise in the park. I love watching the, the, the relationships that are building and the new love for one another that is here. And uh, judgmentalism is dropping. Commitment to the truth is increasing. Our sensitivity to the spirit is increasing. Our desire not to force a message down someone's throat, that's disappearing. But the desire to offer words of life to the people around us is increasing. And that's all the things that we want. So numbers are up. Giving is up. Transformation is up. Salvation is up. People that wandered away from Jesus are back to faith. All of those things are the evidences that the spirit is moving. Uh, and so it's exciting to see it. So we've talked a little bit about our church, um, but as this little church here in Bentley Street, we are part of 
the global church, we're part of different entities that happen. So if you don't know, this church is part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Uh, and what that means is I have a heck of a lot of support which is fantastic because most churches don't have it. We're part of a great denomination that values the Word of God, that believes the Spirit is moving, that has a heart for mission around the world and seeing people reached with the gospel. And one of the blessings today is Steve Fowler is the director of church revitalization. So he's the guy that heads up and helps all the churches that need to get to a healthier place. He comes in and helps us in that process. I asked Steve I'm glad that you and your wife, Trina, right? <laughs> I was like, I was going to say Trisha. I was like, that's not right. I'm glad you're both here. Thanks for coming. And I invite Steve up just to share a few words. Thanks, Scotty. It's uh, an honor to be with you here today. And as Scotty's mentioned, uh, you're part of a global family, a global family that um, is seeking to impact the nations and the neighborhoods. So I love that uh, just sitting here, it's actually my second time being here uh, this, this year, and I just love the fact of your, your passion to reach your neighborhood and see the kingdom of God advance among you. Um, th there is a passage of scripture that is it's Exodus chapter 33. It's, it's a really, it's, it's a crossroads for uh, the people of God. It's, it's post uh, golden calf and God says to Moses I'm going to give you everything you want I'm going to give you all the goodies I'm t you're going to go to the land of milk and honey everything you've been dreaming about is going to be yours I'm going to send an angel uh, ahead of you I'm not going with you because if I do go with you I'm afraid because of your stiff necked disobedience that I just might wipe you out myself so for your own protection, I'm not going with you, but I'm going to give you everything you want. And Moses responds with incredible leadership wisdom because he's just been given a, a significant offer. He's been offered success without the presence. And Moses says, no, we're not leaving here unless you go with us. We're, we're not going... What else will distinguish us from the rest of the people on this planet if it's not your presence with us? Look, you need to hear something. Hollywood will always make better movies. Corporate America will always build better buildings. Wall Street will always have more money. Movies are fine. Buildings are a necessity. And we, we, need, we need money to, to help um, advance things that, we, that God's put in our heart. But friends... The one thing that distinguishes us from the rest of the people on the planet is not our buildings, not our money, it's not the movies, it's not the music we write, it's the presence of Jesus. And there is a heaven and earth difference between the omnipresence of God and the manifest presence of God. And my sense is, even as I listen to the stories that are being told here, Dan's story of the prayer room, Jessica, your story, thank you, I mean, I just... I sense the, the, the health of the Spirit in this place as you are sharing vulnerably what, is, what you're experiencing in life. And Mark's story. These are stories of weakness and brokenness being brought to a Savior who has the power to transform and resurrect and to bring life to that which has been dead. And so I celebrate with you on this weekend a vision of waking up, a vision of seeking the manifest presence of God. Yes, God is always present, right? So just, just to help you understand, if there's a millionaire in the room and they come to church and they leave, they have been present. But if there's a millionaire in the room and they drop a check in the box as they're leaving, they've just manifested their presence, <laughs> right? And I was looking at the bullets, and I thought September could use a little bump. But there's a, there's a heaven and earth difference between the two. And I sense, and Scotty, thank you for your leadership in this. I sense your pursuit of the presence of God. And friends, Trina and I, we just bless that. We bless your pursuit of Jesus. And may his kingdom come, and may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a pleasure to be here to represent the Alliance District uh, Northwest office, and um, I can't wait to hear more stories of what Jesus is doing among you. Thanks for letting us be with you and celebrate with you today. Awesome. 
Ah, oh, more goodness. So on one hand, we've got this partnership with CMA. Thanks, Steve. That was, uh, I'm going to re-listen to that. I'm probably going to have Sue type that up, and I'm going to meditate on that for a little bit, because that was oh, power. Um, so on one hand, we've got the Christian Missionary Alliance and the denominational support that we have there. We have another partnership that's really meaningful to us in the church, and that's the partnership that we walk in with 24-7 prayer. And we are blessed to have Renee as part of our church, who's on the national leadership team for 24-7 prayer. And I asked her if she'd be willing, as a prayer representative and leadership within this globe, other global movement, to if she had a word of encouragement and a blessing that she wanted to pray over us. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'm going to stay down here because I have a boot on my leg. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Steve, that was great. I think I'm going to listen to that and have Sue type it up and meditate on it too. <laughs> um, I was praying, before I get to what I have written up, um, I was praying for you guys over the last couple of weeks and just asking the Lord is there a word, is there a phrase, is there a picture, is there anything that you want me to say on this particular morning? And the phrase that I heard was, streams in the wasteland. <laughs> streams in the wasteland. And I looked up that scripture, Isaiah 43, that Scotty read earlier, and I was going to bring that and say something important, but... Then I, I thought, no, I'll say something else. <laughs> but streams in the wasteland, I think that phrase, I, I have this picture in my mind of the desert and the once-in-a-lifetime storm that comes and floods the deserts. And, and streams actually begin to flow through and flowers begin to bud and the desert comes to life like you would have walked through that desert so many different days and never have known the seed that is just waiting right underneath the soil to germinate and to flourish and um, so I think just what I'm thinking is that may this church be that once in a lifetime storm that comes into the wasteland parts of our city and brings up the germination and the flourishing of all that lies right beneath the surface. And may we be able to see the possibility and the potential that is there in places where it looks impossible. So streams in the wasteland. Um, over these last two years, and just what I wanted to share real quickly, is I've had the privilege as Scotty's friend and co-laborer uh, in the city to have sort of a front row seat watching all of the transitions as they've taken place here um, and as he has become the pastor. And I just want you to know that from my vantage point, there's no doubt in my mind that it was no mistake that you called Scotty to this church, and I know you agree with that. I believe the committee and the church were clearly led of God making this decision, that it was an open door for him, but it was an open door for you, and you both chose to walk through it. I've watched Scotty choose to love you, a people that he didn't know at first. He chose to love you authentically and from his heart, not just in word, but in action, indeed. He has held you tenderly before the Lord, patiently walking out what he believes best fits who you are as a congregation and discerning where he sees the Lord himself at work in you. I want you to know that not every pastor takes this position. It's a position of humility and a position of true concern for your well-being and for the destination that God has for this body. Scotty's more concerned with how you develop and grow in your relationship with God 
and how that begins to spill out into the world around you than he is with making his own vision of something come to pass. And that is such a beautiful thing. So when we are being called to arise, it's not a vague call to some big picture vision that is unattainable, but it's a call to enter into our true identity as sons and daughters of the Most High, to understand who we were created to be and what the God dream is that he has put into each of our hearts. It's to enter into a space of exploration to determine more clearly how each one of us carries the presence of God into the world around us. And so I look with great hopes and great expectation at what is to come because I know many of you here. And I know the beautiful giftings and the callings that are on your life. And each one matters. Each one is significant. Each one is needed to bring transformation, not just within the church, but outside of the church, in the communities where we live, where we work, where we send our kids to school, where we go to the store, where we walk our dog. Uh, each one matters and is significant to be able to see the kingdom of God come on the earth. And when we pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, it is us asking God to be present in our own very lives as we go about our day. So my prayer for you is that you will arise in love that your love for the Father would deepen as you understand how high and wide and deep and long his love is for you, that you would be rooted and established in this love, that your love for the Son Jesus would be ignited into a flame that burns bright as a light in the darkness, drawing many into that same light that your love for one another would be filled with mercy, compassion, gentleness, patience, and hope as you grow together as a family and as friends, and that your love for the world would be ever-expanding as you walk among those that God so dearly loves, seeing his heart for each person, for each situation, for each place recognizing the work of the Spirit moving you into this co-creation of all that is new. And for this last part, if you would just stand to your feet. So I declare over you, Arise, church, and shine, for his light has come, and he has risen over you. Arise, church, and shine, for although the darkness covers the earth, he is rising over you. Arise, church, and shine, for he will rise through you, and many will come to his light. Amen. You can have a little seat. Wow. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Renee. <laughs> you know, our job as Christians is to sit in the Word of God because it reveals the person of Jesus whose presence transforms us. But there are other things out there. This is what we're trying to cultivate, the kind of heart that is open and responsive to the work of God and the Word of God wherever it appears. And so when I say I'm going to print those things out and meditate on them, like what we're hearing is the Word of God and His heart for us. And I think we could spend the next 50 years working out how to live into those two words that were just given to us. And that's what I fully intend to do. Um, I want to finish with a, just a, a little comment or reflection. We, we've talked about this before in our church. Um, we, what we call prophetic actions. So all through Scripture, we see these events that happen um, Old and New Testament, where people engage in a specific act that carries a spiritual consequence. Uh, there are characters in the Bible like Ezekiel who are asked to do all sorts of crazy things, lie on your side for a year uh, and, and cook over cow manure. 
uh, as a symbol to people. And by doing it, his actions were declaring something spiritual to the world. Um, you've got things like baptism, where we get in the water and we die to self when we come up new, and that action declares a new spiritual reality. Uh, there's things like marriage, where two people come together in the presence of God and make vows together, and Scripture tells us that they become one. So in that act of taking vows, they are spiritually united as one body. And so there are all sorts of things we do in life uh, and, and in the history of the church that are these prophetic moments. And so what, what I want us to understand today is taking a new name is not just us doing a branding exercise, but this is a prophetic declaration over our church that we are different as we move forward. It is us, by this action, embracing the calling that God has given us and making an inner commitment to walk differently in the world as a result of the responsibility that he's putting on us. Now, there's something that happens when one person makes a prophetic statement or action, but something powerful is shown in Scripture when God's people come together in unity it releases in the spiritual realm stuff that we can't even begin to imagine. So by being here and saying that together as a church, we are buying into this, that act of unity is unleashing heavenly realities on our church and on our city for the name of Jesus. Um, so what we're doing today is not just an exercise. This is a prophetic action. And we're asking God to do a new thing here. So I'm going to invite the band up. There's a little response. The band's going to come up and we're, we're going to sing uh, some worship to close out. But this is a picture of a banner that is sitting over on this table. And there are some silver and gold pens. And what we'd love to invite you to do, I, I, I'm going to be quiet in a minute and just give you a moment to reflect. But what I would love you to do is to make your way over to that banner, grab a pen, and you'll have to do it small, is just write the declaration, I will arise and sign your name next to it. Uh, as that action saying, I am committed, whether it's a commitment to this church or just a commitment to doing this anywhere God sends you, it's not about our church. This is a commitment to walking the kind of life that Jesus wants us to walk. And so I'm going to give us a moment to, to, to quietly reflect. I'm going to ask us to do something. And then as we start the worship song, I'm going to release you to go sign over there. My one request, if you can, is try not to write inside the letters. So just stick in the border because we're going to put this up and it makes it easier to see. So uh, yeah, let's take just 20 seconds to be still and just reflect on your heart. What is resonating from this morning? Where's resistance? Where do you need to get right with Jesus? Uh, and, and are you ready uh, to declare to him Jesus, I will arise and do the things that you're calling me to do, whether here or elsewhere, I am yours. Let's take a few seconds.